starting podcast 3.0 episode 79 with with a new uh, a new blank piece of paper. You, you like how it disappears when it when it reaches the edge of the camera screen because the, the camera is actually not like. Uh, <clears throat> I'm having a bad shirt day. Uh, <laughs> if you couldn't. No, look, my shirt's wrinkly. Gray is ter terrible color. Gray hat. Gray. I need a gray umbrella. Then I can look like King Louis Felipe. No, they, they don't. No, no, they understand bad. Everyone has gray days. Uh, no, I'm a, I'm a redhead technically, so I, I won't ever have gray hair. I'll just jump straight to white after like a long, long time. So I'm, I'm getting my grays out <clears throat> this way. Besides, I think that I gave my mother enough gray hair for like both of us. So I, I just, she's just, just kind of sending it all to her. Um, no, actually, if you want to know, I don't think I'm going to show you this. I, I'd have to charge too much money and, and I'd have to start like a different type of, of business uh, but I, but, but like my body hair turns gray. It, it's a, it's like, I've got like too much information. So I'm, I'm getting a little bit, uh, you know, I, I remember years ago, I was talking with a very wealthy friend of mine. Uh, it was a, a married couple, of course. And no, no, it wasn't like a weird, like, married to himself type of I'd say that a friend of mine, and it was a married couple. It, it, I was talking to the wife. <clears throat> this couple were, was, however that works, a friend of mine. And I was having a conversation. And she was telling me that there was this, this guy in the community. Uh, you know, he was a local. They were all locals. Small town politics, you know, how it's it just terrible. And he would go to them and ask for large amounts of money to help some cause. And then he'd turn around and go tell everybody why they were so bad. Why these rich people were, were bad. And for a long time, this rich couple would give him a lot of money knowing that he was saying these things, he'd call and ask for money. They would give him money again. And they never, never once needed to. They never needed. They, were, they didn't get PR from it. They didn't get, they were just good people who liked what he was doing with the money that they gave. Well, she was telling me you know, I, I kind of don't appreciate it with someone coming to me, asking for money, and then turning around and doing things to try to injure me and my reputation. I, I don't need to keep helping him. So I'm sort of thinking about not helping him next time he asks. And I, myself, am sort of feeling the same way. As I live in, you know, different countries, I understand what it's, I mean, it's, it's my life. I mean, there's all this discussion in America about you know, foreigners, immigrants, people coming into the country and saying this and that. Well, guess what? I've lived outside of the United States for nine, almost 10 years. I think I have a few things to say about that. One, immigration laws are terrible. They just don't understand. It, it's not about agreeing with a people. It's just badly written laws. It, it, it's like a it, it, it's, it's like a, 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 a law for dog catchers, but it's like it was made for dealing with tamed circus animals. It, it's like, uh, you know, when if you see a dog in the wild, you have to hold a long whip and, and carry a, a stool so that he doesn't bite you. You know, so it's like, do you know what 
you're talking about you don't you need a whip and a chair to catch the dog you need like a, a hooky thing to like snag him without hurting him like it's just it's like the law it's it's not about what i always hear discussed in the states it, it just they don't know what in the world they're dealing with i think we might be getting some more of that a little bit closer and yes uh <clears throat> Closing windows keeps out mosquitoes and locking doors keeps out criminals. And I mean, you know, my father uh, put, you know, walls around my bedroom and he wasn't the devil. So I I don't see what's wrong with walls. Uh, If they have doors, those are great. I mean, you know, heaven has walls. It has 12 doors that are open. Um, so I, I, you know, I, I, there's this wall phobia uh, thing going on. I, I, you know, I had an Australian teacher. I quickly identified him as a teacher because I was like, you talk like you live off of public funding, like the money's just always going to be there. But then I go to Vietnam and the money just isn't always there. So that's, you know, he was like building a wall. It, it, if you ever you ever talk to like public funding condescending teacher types, they they get really interesting with you know the wall is just not gonna do any good. It's not gonna do any good. It's it's not gonna. It's not. Oh, come on, talk sense. It's not gonna do it. They do this thing, and and he, like I say, he was Australian. That was a. It, but but I mean, we had a, we were we had a friendly conversation. But I said, you have a background in public funding, don't you? He's like, I'm a teacher. Like, okay, all right. It's a state of being for him. It's his identity. It's not just a, a career history with experience. So, yeah, we've got a lot of weird stuff going on with immigration, but laws need to be made to fit immigrants. Like, like if, if an immigrant goes into a country, we, what we need to focus on is the laws that govern that person's ability to work and not make it so overbearing for him to be able to have the, the, the minimum lower types of level jobs that are legal and good for him to have. Uh, or her, for those of you in Reed Rapids who want to hear me state the obvious that you know to everyone else who actually does know it. So I'm in these other countries and I run into problem situations where paperwork, overhead, trying to, you know, do normal things is incredibly, incredibly difficult. And governments just don't know. Now, I'll tell you one thing. Hong Kong really has their stuff together. I mean, my hat is off to China. You can see my balding head, uh, balding slower and slower, by the way. Interesting. But my hat is off to China. I I, Really, everyone in America said, you know what, Hong Kong is going to China. That was 1997. Well, what are we going to do? I'm like, well... Hong Kong isn't going to China so much as it is going away from Great Britain. As Americans, you know, leaving British rule is a good thing. Happy Independence Day uh, in honor of all this. So, I'm over here. And I see this stuff going on. And I'm like, you guys have no clue how many human rights laws you're violating with the rigmarole you put me through. And they argue with me about petty things. And it, it, it's a, it's getting to a point. Oh, time's up. I got to get to my point. <laughs> and by the way, I'm keeping this thing behind me from now on. Most matters gridlocked by personal pride are cloaked as matters of principle. They're not. It seems like a matter of principle when you're mad as an angry bull and can only see the color red. I can't let him get away with doing that to me, the attitude goes. It's about the principle. Principles are important. Without them, society breaks down entirely. So look at the deeper principles truly at stake. Much ado about little, mountains grown from anthills, grown adults squabbling over matters so silly children can't notice the difference. Being petty is also a matter of principle. And that's the point. I'm Jesse Steele, jessesteele.com.